Good morning, everybody. Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and it is uh, Monday, the 25th of January, 2021. Uh, I'm out on Manjaro uh, website, manjaro.org, and what I thought I'd do today is I thought I would uh, do something that's been requested of me, and that is to go through a, an install of Manjaro GNOME desktop environment with Manjaro 2020, the latest build. Uh, and do that with LVM, so that's the Logical Volume Manager, using two disks. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. I'm going to set that up in VirtualBox 6, and so let's head on over to VirtualBox and take a look at it. All right, I'm in uh, VirtualBox 6 and uh, my favorite hypervisor, and so let's go ahead and set up the new machine. I've downloaded already from the website the uh, ISO file, for Manjaro, and uh, so we'll go ahead and get that installed in there. So let me do a machine new, and I'm going to call this Manjaro. Uh, let's do a dash GNOME 2020. All right, and it's based on Arch Linux 64 bit. Let's do next. I'm going to give this uh, 4 gigs of RAM, so that's 4096 megabytes. I'll click next and uh, so create VDI virtual disk image next and dynamically allocated yes click next um, the base hard drive is going to be 50 gigs in size so I'll give that 50 gigs of space let's go ahead and create it let me go ahead and do the settings now get into settings and so I'll, be, I'll click on system and untick the floppy select the hard disk and move it up uh, I'm going to enable the EFI because this is a UEFI build of Manjaro, not an MBR build. Um, then let's move on to display. I'm going to give this uh, 128 megabytes of RAM. Uh, I will set the graphics controller to VBox SVGA. Uh, it seems to like that a little better. Uh, for storage, I'm going to select empty and hit the uh, CD-ROM and go out and choose Manjaro alright and then I'm going to come down to the uh, SATA controller I want to add a, a diff, uh, an additional hard disk here to the system so I'm going to select create here and I'm creating a VDI virtual box disk image next dynamically allocated and next and I'm going to make this one 25 gigabytes half the size of the first one 25 gigabytes in size click create so we've got two disks now one the base disk of 50 gigabytes and then an additional extended disk of 25 we're going to bring them together creating that uh, uh, virtual uh, group uh, the volume group and then the logical volume uh, combining the two so that it's seamless to the user all right and um, so let's see, Manjaro, um, let's see here, let's choose that. Okay, there we go. All right, and so for audio, uh, that looks good. For network, I'm going to select uh, Bridged Adapter, uh, ENP2S0. For serial ports, and don't need to change anything there. For USB, I am going to select USB 3.0. And shared folders and user interface, we don't need to mess with that at all. So let's click OK here. And let's go ahead and launch it and get started. So I'm going to select Start and View and Full Screen and Switch. Let it boot up. And it should boot up here shortly. And it should boot up into the live version of Manjaro. And then we can go from there. I am going to be using the Manjaro Architect to install this. Not going to be using the regular installer. Uh, Majaro Architect is going to give me a little more flexibility to create that logical volume manager. Although I could do it with a regular installer, but it has been requested of me to uh, 
to use the uh, Manjaro Architect in the build as well. I will do that. All right, so it's uh, should be coming up here, and here we are. And uh, so when it comes up and settles down, here we are. This is the Welcome to Manjaro welcome screen. I'm going to close that. We have a wired connection. So I'm connected to a wired connection here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And here we are. So here's Manjaro Architect. And so this is the live version of Manjaro uh, out of the box 2020. So let me double click on the Manjaro Architect and get that started. Get that launched and we'll get on our way. So let me go ahead and bring that up to full. Full screen here. So we have the core, the extra, and the community repos being synchronized. And now we're in the Manjaro architect. So it's asking us right now to select a language. English is the language. And so it's already on OK. So I'm just going to hit the Enter key and select it. All checks are passed. Updating the database. And here we get a screen that says the, this installer will download the latest packages from the Manjaro repositories. And it goes into some other verbiage there. You can read that. Uh, nothing to really concern ourselves with here. So I'm going to hit the Enter key. All right, so the first thing we need to do is prepare the installation. So I'm going to hit the Enter key. Uh, we're going to set the virtual console. I'm going to hit the Enter key and say OK. All right, so currently configured key map setting is US. That's good. I'm going to keep that. Um, we're going to list the devices. That's optional. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. And so here we have an SDA VBox hard disk of uh, 50 gigs in size and an SDB uh, VBox hard disk of 25 gigs in size. So we have two drives. 50 gigs is going to be the base drive and the 25 the extended. And so we're good to go here. And uh, we're going to combine those using Logical Volume Manager or LVM. So let's click back and now it says partition the disk so let's partition that first dev forward slash dev forward slash sda 50 gig so i'm going to click ok and come down to I'm gonna, this since since this is a um, uefi disk and not a, a regular mbr disk i'm going to use gdisk as the partition manager uh, partition utility rather and so the command here is i'm going to use is in for new new partition Default partition one. Uh, first sector is okay. Second sector I'm going to create is going to be uh, 300 megabytes in size, and that's going to be for a boot partition. The type of uh, partition right now is set for 8300 if I hit uh, the default, but I want to uh, make this an EFI partition, so I'm going to use the code EF00 here. So that's an EFI system partition. So the first partition is done. So let's move on to the second partition. So I'm going to click New, in for New. Second per default partition is 2, in that, so I'll hit Enter. First sector is fine. Second sector, I'm going to create a 4 gig swap. And so let me uh, put in 4G, plus 4G. And the current type is 8300, but I'm going to make it a swap. So the code for that is 8200. And you can get the codes, by the way, by listing them out with a capital L. All right, so that's the Linux swap. And so we've created now a 300 megabyte um, boot partition and a 4 gigabyte um, Linux swap. All right. All right, so now let's move on to the third partition. So I'm going to hit N for new. And the default is 3, so hit Enter. First sector is fine. Se last sector, I want to use the remainder of the disk. So hit enter. And then the code that I want to use here is the one for a, um, the code that I'll be using is for the uh, logical volume manager. And so that code is 8E00. Right? And so that's a Linux LVM. All right, so we're done with all three partitions. Let's hit W to write that. And then yes, and let it write. And so it's completed the first partition, partitioning of the 50 gig disk. Let's go back. And let's pick up the 25 gigabyte uh, second hard drive. And we're going to make this an LVM partition, one whole partition for the whole drive. And so let's come down and use GDisk again. And so I'm going to hit uh, N for new. 
Partition number one, default, hit enter. First sector's fine. Last sector's fine. It's going to go use the whole disk. And so the uh, code again is 8E00 for LVM. And so that's a Linux LVM. And uh, let's write that out. And yes to uh, write it out. Okay, so we're done. So both of those drives have been partitioned. And so let's go down to the, we don't need to do anything with Lux encryption. I'm not going to encrypt the drive here. Let's come down to the logical volume management. And this is where, this is the critical part of this uh, particular video. So let's hit enter here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create the VG and the LV uh, here. So let's, uh, we've got several options. We've got create, delete, volume groups, delete all, and back. And so we're going to create the volume group and the logical volume. So let's hit uh, select it on create VG and LVs and then hit OK and we're gonna call this VG and I'm gonna call it VG SSD and uh, let's uh, hit enter and then the two drives that we're gonna be using for the volume group is the dev SDA3 and the, de and the dev SDB1 this is the 45.7 gigabyte uh, drive of the 50 gig and the 25 extended so I'm going to hit the um, space bar to select the first one and space bar to select the second one and hit OK. Confirm creation of the volume group VG SSD with the following partitions uh, forward slash dev SDA3 and forward slash dev SDB1 and that's correct. I'm going to say yes and it's creating those and now it's created a volume group VG SSD of 70 gigabits or gigabytes rigi uh, bytes in size and that's been created so let's go ahead and hit OK and now it's asking me uh, enter the number of logical volumes I want to create well I want to create one logical volume uh, from the two drives and so I'm going to put a one in there hit enter and I'm going to call the logical volume LV SSD alright hit enter and then do you wish to view the new volume scheme yes I do for LVM hit enter and here it is so you can see that we have an SDA VBOX 50 gig drive here um, and then we have SDA1 which is a 300 meg uh, boot partition SDA2 which is the 4 gig swap and then SDA3 which is the uh, logical volume or the, or the volume group and the logical volume of 45.7 gigs and 70.7 gigs respectively and then we have the second drive here of SDB of uh, 25 gigs and SDB1 is part of the logical volume it's a logical volume 2 member alright and then it's part of the VG SSD dash LV SSD here of 70.7 gigabytes alright so let's uh, we're done with that let's hit enter and go back existing volume management detected uh, we're done with that now and so let's go back down to back and hit enter all right, so we're going to mount the partitions now. And so here it says important partitions can be mounted without formatting them. However, we are going to format them. And so let's go ahead and hit enter. Existing logical volume management uh, is being presented. Here it is. Select the root partition. All right, so the root partition here is the 70.7 uh, gigabytes. All right, so it's the dev mapper, the VG SSD, LV SSD. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. Uh, I am going to partition that, I mean uh, format that with ext4, so I'm going to scroll down to ext4, click OK. It says mount mkfs.ext4 uh, space dash q uh, data on the dev mapper vgssd lvssd will be lost, that's good, that's fine. Nothing on there anyway, yes. And then here it says, use the space bar to deselect or select the desired mount options. Okay, the, the only mount option that I'm really concerned about here is the no A time, and that's all I need, and so I'm gonna click, uh, hit enter for okay. Confirm the following mount options, no A time, yes, and hit yes. Mount was successful. Next thing is it's asking for the swap partition. Now, I did not make a swap file, but I made a swap partition, which is what it's asking for. So I'm going to arrow down to the dev SDA2, highlight that it's a 4 gig swap, then hit enter for OK. And so now it's going to mount that partition as make swap space forward slash dev SDA2. And I want to say yes to that. 
All right, and then select any additional partitions in the order. You would uh, think you would come down and select that one for the boot partition, but this is UAFI, and so and it's an LVM, so I'm going to say done here, and it will automatically pop that up. All right, so here it is. So forward slash dev forward slash SDA1 is the 300 meg uh, UEFI partition. All right, so I'm going to select that one, and then I'm going to hit OK. And then it is the forward slash boot forward slash EFI, not the boot. Okay, so it's an EFI boot. And so I'm going to select that one and click OK. And that mount was successful. All right, so let's confirm the installer mirror list. And uh, that's important because the mirror list is what the uh, Manjaro, which is Archbase, will use to pull down the packages. I want to let the system do that itself. Uh, and then I'll select the ones that I want to select. So I'm going to hit OK here. And um, so I don't need to edit the Pac-Man configuration. I don't need to edit the Pac-Man mirror configuration, but I am going to let it rank the mirrors by speed. And so I'm going to select that one and hit OK. And then I'm going to use the stable rather than the testing or the unstable. So it's already highlighted and selected. So I'm going to hit OK here. And then I'm going to select the mirrors using the space bar when this is done and uh, move on. So let's go ahead and hit OK and let it start. All right, so this is going to run through the mirror list. And this is going to take a while because it's going to go through every mirror list available in Manjaro. And when it's done, I'll come back. OK, it's completed. That took about five minutes. And so I'm going to go ahead and select the United States mirrors. And so I'll put the tick in that one and that one and that one that one and that one and then come down I believe there's a few more down here I'll select the United States ones and then I'll click OK to select those and it says I want to use these mirrors OK OK so now that we've ranked the mirror list let's uh, go ahead and go back and refresh the Pac-Man keys we've already done that uh, let's choose the Pac-Man cache and uh, oh, actually we did not do the refresh the Pac-Man keys uh, so let's do that hit enter and refresh those keys that's an important step so don't uh, don't skip it uh, we need to make sure that all the keys are refreshed in the uh, in the system in the Manjaro architect before we uh, move on almost missed that step so don't forget that and once this is completed it shouldn't take very long um, if it does I will pause the video and come back and it looks like it is going to take a while. So let me pause the video and I will come back when this is completed. Okay, so that's completed. And uh, so let's move on to step 11. We're going to choose the Pac-Man cache. And that's important as well because especially if you're downloading a lot of packages, you want to create the, uh, the Pac-Man cache here. So let's choose that. Let's click OK. Uh, let's say yes to that. And then we're going to enable the FSCK hook. Yes, we are. And you want to use the uh, file system checker hook? Yes, we do. Now let's go back. Now we're going to install the desktop system. Let's hit enter. Install Manjaro desktop. We're going to hit OK. I'm going to choose the uh, yay and also the latest kernel here and hit OK. And then we're going to install the GNOME desktop. So I'm going to put a, a space bar to select that one. Hit OK. And would you like to have any additional packages to be installed? No, I do not. I'll make this lean as possible. I want to make this a minimal install, not a full. So I'm going to arrow down to minimal. Hit OK. And off she goes. All right, so this is going to take a while. And um, when this is completed, I will come back. All right, that process took about uh, 15, 20 minutes uh, because it had to also download about 750 locale files. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take off where we uh, left off, which is the auto install free drivers. I'm going to go ahead and select OK for that. And, uh, and now let's do the install bootloader. And I'm going to use the grub here for the bootloader and uh, go ahead and say yes to that to install the bootloader and once this gets installed we'll move on to the rest of the uh, 
Manjaro Architect installation. It should automatically return us to the uh, architect when this is finished. Okay, and I'm going to say yes here. Set the bootloader as default. All right, we're going to configure the base, and so let's go yes. We're going to configure or generate the FSTAB, which is the file system table. And I'm going to use the uh, UUID method here for that. I'm going to say OK. And then for the host name, uh, I'm just going to call it Manjaro. Click OK. Set the system locale. I'm going to select that. And it's on en underscore us under dot utf dash 8, which is correct. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And OK here. Uh, set desktop keyboard layout. Uh, I'm going to come down and select, I believe it should be EN. I know it's going to be US. Sorry. Let me find it. And US. Set time zone and clock. Um, it should be America and New York. So let me find New York. Uh, New York City, there we go. It's my time zone. So it's been set to America, New York. That's good. Okay. And now it's asking uh, for the time zone and clock set. Um, UTC is a universal time standard. Uh, so that is the time that it should be set to, not local time, unless you're running Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK here. Uh, set the root password. All right, let me go ahead and put that in. And repeat it. Hit enter. Uh, add new users. I'm going to go ahead and say OK here. I'm going to add my data pioneer. And hit enter. Uh, I don't want to use ZSH. I want to use uh, Bash. And so I'm going to select Bash, hit the uh, space bar, and hit Enter. Password for Data Pioneer, I'm going to put that in. Enter, and then repeat it. It's creating the user and setting the groups. Let's go back. System tweaks, don't need to set any of there. Review configuration files, that's okay. I don't need to troot into the installation. I'm going to go back. Um, don't need to set the CLI system or custom, install custom system or system rescue because I installed the desktop system and I don't need a rescue. And so I'm going to click done. This is a virtual machine. Okay, no graphics driver has been installed. Uh, would you like to save the installation? I'll say uh, no. And here we are. Uh, let's go ahead and restart the system so that we can uh, get back in uh, as a user. And so let me go ahead and leave and restart. And let me do a OK here on the reboot. And that, that should boot up into Manjaro uh, the installed version, not the uh, architect or the live version, rather. And so we'll see what we have here. Hopefully it'll come up to 1920 by 1080 full screen resolution. It should. And it looks like it did. So let me click on Data Pioneer and put in the password. And I believe we're going to be met with a welcome screen, um, maybe even a tour prompt. I'm not really sure with Manjaro. We'll find out. Yep, here's the welcome screen. Let me go ahead and click next here. Typing. Set, this keyboard setup is English. That's good. Privacy is fine. I'm going to skip the uh, online accounts, and I'm done. So I'm going to start using it. And... See, there's the tour. I'm going to say no thanks to the tour. I'm going to go ahead and close this screen here. And let's get into the terminal. Let me bump the terminal up. 
All right, and I want to run an LSBLK. Take a look at the setup. Okay, so it's very good. We have an SDA, which is a 50 gig uh, drive, and we have SDA1, which is the boot EFI partition of 300 megs. We have the SDA2, which is the 4 gig partition of swap. And then we have the SDA3, which is the ver uh, VG and the LV, um, uh, the volume group and the logical volume here for logical volume management of 70.7 .7 gigabytes. And then we do have the SDB showing up and SDB1 is 25 gig. And it is a part of the VG and LV SSD group here for the logical volume group. So we're good to go. All right. And so this has been um, a uh, presentation of setting up or installing Manjaro with the GNOME desktop environment using the Manjaro architect instead of the uh, typical installer. And we've set up a logical volume management group uh, uh, of 70 gigs from two drives, one a base drive of 50 gigs and an extended drive of 25. So if you thought this uh, video was helpful, go ahead and hit that up a button and give me like button and go ahead and give me a like on the on the video so that it helps my channel. I'd like to grow my channel as much as I can. I'm over um, 1,000 subscribers now. I want to keep it above 1,000 and grow toward two. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that little uh, picture on the right-hand side that comes up at the end of this video, and then that takes you to the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And then make sure you hit that uh, bell to the right of that so that you can be uh, notified every time I upload a video. And so I appreciate it. Glad you joined me today. Hope this was helpful. This has been a video of Manjaro with Gnome DE and LVM with Manjaro Architect. And this is Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.